Hey guys, I got this Trail 110 here. It's got a rod knock. Pretty bad one. My customer wanted me to put one of these Lifan engines in it. It's a semi automatic. And I watched a couple other YouTube videos where it showed how on these Lifans you can make this top mount work. But this bottom one, the engine mount, uh, doesn't quite line up so we're gonna have to work on brackets and things like that here and once I get the engine in I will show you what I have done and how I made this engine work and fit so keep watching thanks the top engine mounting bolt fits perfectly between the frame right here but the stock bolt is a 10 millimeter, and the bolt hole that's on the top of the engine is an 8 millimeter. So don't use an 8 millimeter bolt, just drill the top one out so that the 10 millimeter bolt fits. You'll need to get this mounting kit to make the motor mounts work. Alright, so to make this bracket work, this adapter plate, you have to screw the plate onto the engine first. And then I put a nut and a washer right here on this one. And a nut and a washer on this one. So this bracket right here goes to this engine bolt. So the mount, so the bracket plate gets sandwiched between this bracket and the bolt. On the other side, I've got the bracket, same thing right here, but it's not on the engine mount bolt on the stud next to it. So then because I had to do that and tighten it down with this nut, that's why I put nuts that's why I put nuts on the bracket before I put the foot peg bracket on to space it out. There's spacers that come in the kit, and they go in between here like this, those two little brackets, and then the spacers get sandwiched between, and that's what holds up the bottom of the motor because this motor mount doesn't line up. So you have to have this kit to make it work. And this may not be the exact right way to do it, but it seems to work really well for me. So then I want this original engine guard on, and so what I did is I put just one bolt in there so that I can pivot this. And then before I put the nut on this side, like I've got one here holding it up, but before I put this nut on this side, I'm making this engine guard fit. And so to make it line up with these two holes, you have to redrill. And I put I put these two bolts up just so I could pivot it up, mark it where I needed my hole, and then I took it off, drilled it, made sure it lined up, and I did the same thing over here. So then to make it fit on here, I also had to trim off maybe a quarter of an inch off the back of this. You see I trimmed right up to where the original holes were, right here and right here, and just cut straight across it, and now it fits. The ignition coil wire, spark plug wire, isn't long enough to go from the spark plug and then have the ignition coil mount here where it's supposed to. 
So you have to make sure that your ignition coil is grounded out. I soldered an extra wire in here where the on their little pigtail is supposed to go to the ignition coil. I soldered an extra wire with an end on it and I'm going to mount it right here to the battery box just like the original one. So I'm going to have two grounds going right here. And then I'm just going to tuck the ignition coil inside here. For the wiring, they send you a pigtail that goes to the main wiring harness. This one, the thicker one, is the main one. Their little pigtail goes and connects into it as well. And the pigtail goes and runs around to the ignition coil. And so you just line up the colors. The blue and white goes to the blue and white. Green goes to green. The black goes to black. The other wires that are left, there's three, are the yellow and the green with red and the white. So then those go into the old stator plug. And the stator plug has a white, a yellow, and a green with red. And so you just make a little pigtail. So I made bullet connectors to fit into their harness and then spade connectors to go into the plug and just ran it right around to it. Then there's two other wires that come from the smaller pigtail that goes to the ignition coil. There's a green one and I didn't have to hook it to anything. I think you're supposed to hook it to ground but I grounded mine my ignition coil out by the battery over here. So then the black wire goes to the stock black with white. So I made a little bullet connector right here and connected it and then everything works. The headlight runs the only thing it doesn't do is charge the battery. But like I said, the battery only operates the blinkers and the tail light. So this engine doesn't even need a battery unless you want blinkers and tail light. I'm going to put a pod filter on this because the airbox is so far away. And I doubled up my intake manifold gaskets here and it's still so far away. This was the original airbox boot. And if you can see how far away it is, like if you line this up here where it's supposed to go on the clamp, it's still an inch and a half or two inches away from the carburetor. And so I have a brand new boot on the shelf and I put put it on and it's also still just so far away. So I'm going to just install my stock airbox and put a pod filter in here and then put my cover over it. And nobody will ever even notice. I'm just going to take a sneaky route. If somebody looks up from underneath they'll see the pod filter but it's going to be barely noticeable. I also had to put three exhaust gaskets inside so that the muffler would make contact with the engine. I don't know if you can see those in there. They're just three regular stock gaskets. The carburetor doesn't have a fuel valve on it, so I put these two inline fuel valves so that way he has a reserve on the red line and on on the other so when you're ready to run you switch the run valve on and when you want to switch to reserve you switch the reserve valve on and then when you want to turn your fuel off just shut them both off Over here on this side, I put my pod filter in. I put the original shifter on, but the way it was going to line up, it was definitely going to hit the foot peg 
bracket right here. And instead of cutting it and welding it and bringing the foot peg out, I cut the heel shifter off from where it was attached over here on the other side and brought it all the way out to this side and welded it front and back. And there is just enough gap right here for everything to work smoothly. So now he's got his heel shifter and toe shifter and plus the original shifter is longer than the life end one that comes in the box so you get better leverage. So down here on this brake lever it does hit the foot peg right here, foot peg bracket, but it's not such a big deal. I just adjusted the brake back here and it still works great. So if you wanted to you could cut this and weld it and, and reshape it so that it sits up higher but it feels great the way it is. I had to lengthen the kickstand. I put about two inches in here. Just cut the kickstand, welded it, and then it was hitting the chain and so I welded an extra little bump right here and an extra bump right here. That way the kickstand doesn't hit the chain. And it has a nice angle. If I hadn't extended the kickstand, this thing was leaning way too far over to the left. Like it was going to fall over. Okay, this is a semi-automatic Lifan engine. This bike doesn't have a clutch lever up here. If you have a CT90 like this one, it has a brake lever right here. This one's broken off, um, but the CT90s had the brake lever there, and if you were to swap out the engine, you would need to make sure it's a semi-automatic, like this one, so that there's no lever up here. If you've got a CT110 and there's no lever here, then you could put a clutch lever there if you didn't want the semi-automatic. But make sure you get the semi-automatic if this is what you'd like to do. There's a lot of different engines on eBay, and most of them aren't semi-automatic. Another note is that the blinker system works off of the battery, so you got to keep the battery charged. I added this extra battery charger lead right here so that we can keep the battery charged and keep the blinkers working. Um, but the headlight works off of the stator in the engine. So because the headlight is operating off the stator, you can run this bike with a dead battery or even without a battery. It's just that the blinkers and the tail light won't work. But with a battery in it, the blinkers and the tail light work, so just keep them charged. 